Welcome back everybody to the Cleveland Cavaliers My NBA series here on the PlayStation 5. As today, we continue here in the offseason doing our free agency. Last episode was the NBA Draft, and if you missed that episode, I encourage that you go back and watch it. But long story short, we had a very busy day. We entered draft night with six picks, including the fourth and sixth overall picks in the NBA Draft. We moved up to get the second pick from the 76ers and drafted Odavius Shepard, who we believe can be the future face of our franchise. With the other picks that we kept, we selected Farek Nwora at pick 6, Mamadou Anechionia at pick 15, and Zion Hopkins III at pick 38. Long story short, to move up to the second pick, we traded our late first round pick, I forget the number, I think it was like 20, pick 27, two late second rounders, a future Milwaukee Bucks first rounder next year, and for reference, the Bucks aren't that good. And Anthony Simons in a three-team trade to give us pick two and a future second rounder, I think, in like 2026. So, yeah, pretty big trade. I know we gave up a lot, but I think it is worth it to get a guy like Odavius Shepard, who we believe has the potential to be a superstar in this league for a long time. Shepard's skill set is a really good one. He's a guy who can do a little bit of everything. He's a good scorer. He's a good playmaker. He's a good perimeter defender, and he provides a lot of versatility for us, which I think will make this upcoming free agency a lot easier, just knowing that Shepard could probably play the 1, 2, 3, or the 4 for the offense and can guard a lot of players on the perimeter. With our next three picks, we focused on the wings. We got Farek Nwora, who's mainly a really good perimeter shooter. We hope that he can refine the rest of his game. Mamadou Anechioni is a talented 3 and D guy. He's a good three-point shooter. He's a solid perimeter defender. And then Zion Hopkins the third, an athletic guy who is a really good scorer from inside the arc. But outside of that, his game isn't all that good. He's not great as a playmaker or a defender. But he has freakish athleticism, and he has a lot of potential. He's probably a guy who's going to start the year in the G League. So entering free agency, we're probably the only team in the league with positive cap space. Our two most expensive contracts are actually Odavius Shepard and Farek Wara, who we just drafted. So I think that goes to show that we have a lot of money here, and we have a lot of guys who are going to be off the books, a lot of guys whose rights will be renounced. So that $11 million will actually prove to be a lot more money, as you'll see pretty shortly so we have plenty of money to spend here and if we want we can go and splurge on some big name guys so without further ado let's get this one underway officially as we will start with team player options qualifying and then we will enter the free agency period and after free agency we will go over the remainder of the offseason today so as you can see we've got a lot to cover so uh, for team options, we have four players here, Obi Toppin, Kevin Porter Jr., Cam Reddish, and Cassius Winston. We are going to accept all of them. Toppin, Porter, and Reddish were all no-brainers, and I want to accept Cassius Winston. I'm not sure what his role will be next year. I'm not sure if he's going to start the year in the rotation, but I would rather have him on the team. There are some big names who declined their player options, including Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, Russell Westbrook, and others, so they will all be unrestricted free agents this offseason. For qualifying offers, we have a lot of players we can offer it to, but we're only going to give it to Colin Sexton. I do plan on bringing Sexton back, whether that's for the qualifying or an extension, but we'll have to see what happens in free agency, and Sexton is not our top priority per se at the moment. Everybody else whose qualifying offer we did not accept, we're going to renounce their rights because guys like Romeo Lineford, he's taken up 19 mil, so I'd rather just not have to worry about his rights. Same goes for pretty much everybody else outside of Sexton. That doesn't mean we won't bring some of these guys back, like Taco Fall, for example. I want to bring him back for cheap. I can certainly do that, but I want to renounce all their rights, so now we have $54 million to spend in free agency. And this class is really solid. There are a bunch of good restricted free agents, mainly the top picks in the 2018 draft. So guys like Luka Doncic, Trey Young, DeAndre Ayton, etc. And then all the talented unrestricted free agents as well. So what this team needs is a big man. I think Odavia Shepard can run the point. We have about 20,000 wings, but I want to find a good big, and I'm willing to spend a lot of money in order to do that. The first player we're going to look at is Jaron Jackson Jr., who... 
is a perfect fit for the modern NBA. He's a great rim protector. He also has the versatility to defend on the perimeter. He's a really good offensive player. He's not a traditional center, per se, but I think he could be a good pickup. So we're going to offer him a four-year maximum contract of $27 million per year. Remember, he is restricted, so the Grizzlies will have the ability to match it. We're also going to go after DeAndre Ayton, the former number one overall pick. Excellent rim protector. He's also a great rebounder, and I think his rim protection and rebounding ability makes him my top choice because I think he just fits what we need. I think Jared Jackson's a little bit better overall as a player, but I'm looking for a dominant center inside, and I think if I were to have my choice, I would pick DeAndre Ayton of all the players I will be going after, the other one being Marvin Bagley, who... He was the second overall pick in this draft. Bagley is not quite as good as Jaron Jackson or DeAndre Ayton, but he's really good in his own right. He's a really solid offensive player. I'm pretty sure he averaged around 20 a game last year. He's a good enough rebounder. He's a good enough interior defender. And unlike DeAndre Ayton and Jaron Jackson, not a lot of teams have put their attention into Marvin Bagley. So if Ayton and Jaron decide to accept other options, we could always go ahead and sign Marvin Bagley and hope the Kings don't want to match it. We're going to offer him a four-year maximum contract as well. Some may think that's an overpay, but I really want to get at least one of these guys, probably no more than one. But I'd like to have one of those three, and if we don't get any of them, if they accept other offers or if their current teams match, there are some good options across the board, specifically at the center position. I do want to take a look here at power forwards as well, but there aren't really a bunch of guys who I want to look at for center. And then Colin Sexton, we're going to wait a little bit just to make sure we know that we get what we want at center. So Marvin Bagley accepts our offer. However, DeAndre Ayton and Jaron Jackson don't. So Ayton and Jackson now pretty much look like they're off the table, but Marvin Bagley has accepted. Now the Kings can match our offer sheet if they want to bring him back. They did just draft a power forward with the eighth overall pick in Jalen Chambers, so maybe that will be the writing on the wall to suggest that they're not willing to bring Bagley back. However, Marvin Bagley is really good, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do match it. He averaged 20 a game last year and around 12 rebounds. He finally took that big leap that we've all been waiting for him to do. So Jaron Jackson signs with the Heat. However, the Grizzlies would match that. The Suns get DeAndre Ayton. And as you can see, the Kings have decided to match the offer sheet for Marvin Bagley, which means Bagley will be back in Sacramento and we can't get him. So we did not get any of our top three choices, but there are still good options to go after. And I want to make sure this center situation is figured out before we worry about Colin Sexton. We have bird rights on Sexton, which means we can go over the salary cap to offer him as much as we want. However, we don't have that option to go after big men. So I also want to look at the trade market as well. I think there are better options available for trade than in free agency at the moment. I want to get a young big man who is a good rim protector because that's what we need. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo is young with upside, but I'd rather have a proven center there this year. The first guy we are going to look at is Jarrett Allen, who's a really solid rebounder, really solid inside scorer. He blocks shots, and although he doesn't have much of a perimeter presence, he's giving us everything that I'm looking for in a center, and I don't think the Nets view him that highly, and I think we could get him pretty easily. Another guy is Miles Turner. He's a little bit more advanced offensively, and he's not quite as good of a rebounder, but the Pacers did just draft Jeremiah Coyo number one overall, so maybe that means they'll be willing to ditch Miles Turner. The Portland Trailblazers just signed Yusuf Nurkic to a big extension, so Portland has multiple players we could look at, including Jalen Smith, the third-year pro out of Maryland, and Okapi Odoye. I think Adoye is probably the least likely of the four I just mentioned, considering he was just the second overall pick last year. He didn't have an outstanding rookie year, but, I mean, he was good enough. However, their re-signing of Nurkic could mean that they're willing to move on for him. The problem is, there aren't a lot of players on the team I'm willing to trade at the moment. Maybe a guy like Cam Reddish or Kevin Porter Jr. makes sense. Both of them have very similar roles for us, and both of them are on their last years of their contract. But I don't really want to trade either of them right now, specifically Reddish, who really broke out this past season and is a player I'd like to keep going forward. So we're not going to make a trade at any of those guys at the moment. We're going to go back at three agents here, take a look at a few guys, including Jonas Valo and Chunas. 
Paolo Anciunas isn't as young or as good as someone like DeAndre Ayton, Jaron Jackson, or Marvin Bagley, but he does the job. The Grizzlies just signed Jaron Jackson to a big extension, so maybe they're not really willing to pay Paolo Anciunas, and we're going to offer him a two-year contract worth $37 million. That's $18.5 per year. I also want to take a look at Bull Bull. He's more of a question mark. However, he does have potential. We're going to offer him a one-year deal for 18 mil. If I had my, cho my choice between Valo and Junis and Bull, I'd probably pick Valo and Junis just because we know what we're going to get with him. Bull Bull has more long-term potential. He's eight years younger, but I don't really know what to think about him. So Valo and Junis accepts our offer. Bull Bull is still mulling. I would pick Valo and Junis out of these two anyway, so that makes things pretty easy. We're going to take our offer off of Bull Bull, and Jonas Valo and Junis is now the new starting center of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So now that we had that out of the way, now we can focus on bringing back Colin Sexton. We're going to offer him a five-year, $150 million contract, so a little bit over $25 million per year. I know that seems like a lot, but we really want him. Bull Bull accepted, but we're not going to bring him back. And then eventually Colin Sexton would accept our deal. So Colin Sexton will be returning to the team on a massive new deal. He's only 23 or 24 years old. And I feel like he's grown nicely these past few seasons. He just had his best season last year. I know his numbers were still pretty similar to what they've been. But that's with less minutes and more mouths to feed on this team. As free agency now concludes, I want to get a few roster fillers. We're going to re-sign Taco Fall and Keelan Ofeler to short deals, and we're also going to bring in veteran point guard Ish Smith. All three of them accept right away, so they are now with the squad. So that puts us at 16 players. I think you can only hold 15, so we're not really going to make any more moves for now. And as you can see, looking at the rest of his free agency class, there are still some good players here, like Shea Gilgis Alexander, who has not received a big contract from anybody, surprisingly. TJ Warren, Miles Bridges, Dante DiVincenzo, Devontae Graham. Bunch of good players still here left, but I do want to see what's happened in the rest of the NBA because a lot of big things have happened. So a lot of the restricted guys, they're back with their old teams. KD signs a five-year deal to stay in Brooklyn. Jimmy Butler, a three-year, $100 million contract to go back to Chicago. So Jimmy Butler will be going back where it all started. He will return to the Bulls, which I find fairly interesting and a really fun storyline in my opinion. The Bulls were really good this past season. They do have Larry Markkinen and Wendell Carter in free agency and were unable to bring back either of them. But, I mean, it's Jimmy Butler. Uh, the Hawks had a lot of trouble bringing back Trey Young. They had to make a few trades to clear up some cap space, but they were able to. Russell Westbrook signed a big contract with the Charlotte Hornets. I don't get that move for either side. Russ is 33. His game relies on athleticism, and he's going to decline. So I don't really know why Charlotte did that. And the fit just does not make sense. With him and LaMelo Ball, I, I don't really get it. Lowry Markkinen is going to the Heat, so Markkinen and Butler are pretty much swapped for each other. Wendell Carter is going to the San Antonio Spurs, where he should get a bigger role. He was the backup last year to Andre Drummond in Chicago. OG Ananobi signs a big contract with the Detroit Pistons. As a Pistons fan, I wouldn't mind that. I think OG Ananobi is quite good. Mitchell Robinson back to Washington. Terry Rozier to Toronto. Kyle Kuzma is a Milwaukee Buck. Marcus Smart to Denver. We have Patrick Beverly going to Detroit. So a lot of interesting moves. But I think the most interesting actually happened in the trade market. We had four very big trades this offseason. Two of which involved the Atlanta Hawks, who were trying to clear up some cap space. So they traded John Collins and Dylan Windler to the Spurs for Patrick Williams and Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Patrick Williams is not as good as Collins, but he's younger and far cheaper. And the Hawks also traded Clint Capella in a first-round pick to the Clippers for Ivica Zubats and Juan Hernan Gomez. I do still think the Hawks are championship contenders, although they did lose two pieces in Collins and Capella. The 76ers and Rockets both needed to make changes. The Embiid-Simmons pairing wasn't working. And James Harden's not going to lead the Rockets to a championship. So James Harden has been traded to the 76ers in exchange for Joel Embiid, Leandro Balmaro, and a future first-round pick. And the Miami Heat have traded Gordon Hayward along with young point guard Dino Dixon to the Raptors for Fred Van Vliet in a first-rounder this year. The Heat trying to make up for some star power with the loss of Jimmy Butler. Try to get a ball-dominant player on the roster like what Butler was. So a very big offseason around the league as we now conclude free agency. 
Uh, we have some guys coming back on the qualifying, like Zeke Niaji and Romeo Lineford. I think Jacoby Bruce as well, and this is kind of weird because if you guys remember, we did not offer any of these guys for qualifying offers. I don't know why they're here. I guess we'll just have to cut them, but I think that means we have to take a hit if they don't sign anywhere else this year. So, that's annoying. But, I mean, 2K is going to 2K. So, here we are at player progression. Odavia Shepard goes up to an 86. Rookies don't progress after they get drafted, so I don't really know why he went up, but I'm not going to complain. Colin Sexton to an 85. Obi Toppin to an 82. Cam Reddish with a big jump. He goes up 6 and starts the year at an 82. KPJ to an 81. Cedric Garrett only goes up to an 80. I'm a little bit disappointed with that. Big Fafa is a 77. And then some of the guys down here, the other rookies didn't progress because that's not how this game works. But I'm not going to complain. It is cool to say we have an 86 overall rookie on the roster. Jacoby Bruce also got a lot worse, even though he's only 20. I don't really know how that happened, but oh well, it is what it is. So now we're briefly going to go here through Summer League. Here's a look at the Summer League roster that the game gave us. They don't even have Odavia Shepard here. They just said Odavia Shepard is too good for the Summer League, so he's not going to participate. I'm not going to play any of the Summer League games. We're just going to try to simulate through it pretty quickly. Let's get our first look at some of these new guys on the team. I'm not really going to touch the rotation because, well, I don't really care to. I would have guys like Farek Dwora starting over Cassius Winston, but again, it's Summer League. I'm not really going to sweat over it. And I guess Dwora gets to play of worse players, which means he'll be able to take more shots, which I do think is pretty good. So we're going to simulate here to the postseason, and it's kind of hard to find us because this is so small. But we are going to play here against the LA Clippers in the first round. We were pretty good in the regular season of the Summer League. We went 2-1. So we end up winning this first game by 22 against the Clippers. 17-8 for Niaji, 16-11 for Big Fafa. So it clearly looks like we dominated on the glass. Quiet game for Cedric Garrett, though, I will say. So now we will play the Sacramento Kings here in the second round of the Summer League. And it looks like we're going to have no problem with these guys. We had the lead from start to finish. 23-10 for Big Fafa. He seems to be our best player here in Summer League. I think Big Fafa has a chip on his shoulder. He's not going to be the starting center this year. He's still going to get plenty of minutes, but we signed a veteran over him, so I do think there is a little bit of pressure on him to play well, and he has. Here in Game 3, we barely beat for Raptors. Big Fafa was a little bit quieter with only 5 points, but the rest of the guys stepped up. Big game for Zeke Miyagi, although he obviously shouldn't be on the roster. Cassius Winston was the leading scorer. It's now in the semifinals here against the Charlotte Hornets. This one is pretty close. The Hornets do have a nice little lead on us, and it looks like they will pull this one out. That's what she said. 96-86 is the final. Cedric Garrett finally chooses to show up here with 16-6. and And the Hornets will play the LA Lakers in the championship round. Charlotte would end up winning it. 15 points for Malachi Everett and Grant Riller each. This Hornet Summer League squad is kind of stacked. With the Lakers, meanwhile, the only names I recognize are Terry Tate, Precious Achiwa, and Zaire Smith. Everybody else there just looks like auto-generated nobodies. So here are the playoff stats for the Summer League. I wish we could get the regular season stats, although the regular season was only three games. I still am curious to see them, but it doesn't look like we get to, so that's kind of an oof. For the All-Star City, they're going to make it Boston. I really don't care. That's fine. For the draft class, I have started construction for the next class. I am just going to press auto for now, but I have started off camera within the past week or so. So that means the 2K Hoop Summit doesn't really matter because the current players aren't going to be in this draft class. So on to training camps. The final step of the offseason, we only have one training camp. And there are a number of different ways we could go here, but I'm going to give Farek Nwara perimeter defense. This team needs perimeter defense. And we drafted him, although he is a wing who cannot defend. So, I want to get that a little bit better. And hopefully, the goal is within the next few seasons, Nwara can be a good two-way player rather than just a really good offensive player. So, his perimeter defensive stats will go up. And I think that is a good use of our one and only training camp. So, we have 19 players on the roster. We should have 16. But, again, since the game is broken and signed as Jacoby Bruce... Uh, Romeo Lineford and Zeke Niaji, even though I didn't. So we're going to have to cut four players here. Bruce, uh, Langford, and Niaji. Those were fairly easy because I did not bring them back. Although all of them are young players with potential, and I'm not opposed to bringing them back eventually. 
I just don't really think it makes sense to have him on the team right now. So we're going to cut all three of them. And now we have to cut one more player. This wasn't too hard. Ish Smith is 34. He wasn't going to get playing time. Ish Smith is one of my guys in real life, but I have to cut him. So that brings us here to the regular season. Season number three will officially kick off next episode. We have opening game against the Charlotte Hornets. Our home opener is also against the Hornets, so we'll probably play one of those other games in the next episode as well. We have three games against the Indiana Pacers early, which I think is interesting because obviously they've had the past two number one overall picks. So obviously there is some storylines with us and the Pacers, and I think we can become fun rivals. Here's a look at the rotations I will be starting with to open up the season. Shepard will be running the point. Sexton, Garrett, Toppin, and Valo and Chunis will fill out the rest of the starting lineup. And then for guys getting minutes off the bench, Cam Reddish will be the sixth man, followed by Kevin Porter Jr., Yusuf Diafafa Fobo, and our two rookies, Farek Nawara and Mamadou Anechi Onia. I had to make some tough decisions here. I wanted to give guys specifically like Isaiah Thomas some minutes. So what I've decided to do is I'm putting Isaiah Thomas along with Zion Hopkins the third in the G League. Hopkins was a no-brainer, although I think Isaiah Thomas is good enough to have NBA minutes, and I do think he will get playing time pretty early in the season, whether we make a trade or whether one of our rookies slumps and we need to have them in the G League. So I think for right now, Isaiah Thomas will start the season in the G League, but I am confident that he will be with the big league club fairly sooner than later. So that will end free agency here. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Certainly a crazy offseason, not only for our team, but the rest of the NBA as well. A new era of Cleveland Cavaliers basketball is here with an extended Colin Sexton, Jonas Valo and Chunis, and of course, our new rookies headlined by the second overall pick, Odavius Shepard. So that will end today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like button and subscribe. Next episode will be opening game against the Charlotte Hornets along with one of these other games early in the season, probably against the Pacers. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm out. Peace.